So, Sorry, guys. hey, right now you're starting out with this difficult problem. Give it a go. Here we go. Three eighths and five six. Okay. We want to find a common denominator when we're adding in. Just because I probably learned it this way, I go through and I put my common denominator, or I stack my fractions so that I can work across the page with my common denominator over here. And you don't have to do it this way, but this will be the way that I show it. And so, if that bothers you, I'm sorry. All right? Always try to reduce your fractions first. I'm trying to foreshadow for a little later. Just keep that in mind. It'll save you time. Hey, we can't reduce these, but we need to find a common denominator. So what do 6 and 8 both go into? 24. 24. Oops. 24. 24. Or the 2 there. Hey, what do we multiply 6 by to get 24? 4. Four. And so this becomes that special number 1. 4 by 4 is still 1, so we're not changing its value, just its look. 5 times 4 is? 20. 8 times what is 24? 3. 3 times 3 is? 9. 9 plus 20 is 29 over 24. And we'll leave it in a improper there. 29, 24. All right. Yes? Yeah, you can't cancel because it's not multiplication. Yeah. Yeah, we can't cross cancel. Good. Other questions there? Okay, well, let's move on now. Let's take a look at it. example two off your assignment. Okay? We want to find the least common multiple. All right? And so looking at those seven, we're going to do, or those six problems, we're going to do those together. Okay, I want to focus in on number two. All right? It says find the least common multiple there. I'm going to pretend, just for the sake of what we're doing, so that you actually understand why we're doing this, I'm going to pretend that these are fractions. Okay? The purpose of what we're doing on this page, make sure you're looking here, the 8-5 is the toughest of all the lessons, I believe, in this chapter. Okay? The purpose of this is so we can find a common denominator. If I was adding 1 over this mess plus 1 over this mess, I would have to have the same mess on the bottom, right? Everything It has to be identical. Right now it's not identical. So we want to find the least common multiple, aka the greatest, or excuse me, the, the common denominator for us. And it's nice to have the least common denominator. That way you don't have to do a bunch of reducing at the end. Okay. So what you do is you go through and you look at numbers. 3 and 6. If I have 3 here and 6 here, what's the common multiple of those? 3. three. Oh. 6. The common factor is 3. The common multiple is 6. Okay? So we're going to put a 6 down here. That's going to be our, our common multiple. If we look at x and x, what do they both go into? x. So we're going to put an x down there. All right, here's the toughians. You look at y squared and y to the fourth. What's the common multiple of those two? Tell your neighbor what you think. Y to the fourth. Right? 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 Tell your neighbor why you think it is what it is. Why? Isn't it y to the second? What does that go as three and six? No, because the, I don't think that works in the same scenario because like the three and the six, you don't use the same. It's not three times three, it's six. It's not the common multiple. It's not the common greatest. The greatest common hey, wrap it up. What? So it'd be like, extra, or yeah. wouldn't it be wide of the four? Because you're At least I'm thinking outside the box instead of the four. Okay. Hey, usually we hear y squared. Who said y squared? And y to the fourth. Who says y to the fourth? Who says something different? What's the difference? For y. Y? Okay, why? Because he said so. Just because. Why? Okay. What? <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, 
Think of it this way. This y squared means y times y. That's y squared, right? And y to the fourth means y times y times y times y. All right? So y squared and y to the fourth. Is there any way for me to make this thing become this? Yeah, I'd have to divide by 2, right? And we're not into dividing, but how about going from here to here? Yeah. How many more would we need? 2. So we can make this, that, by multiplying it by y to the second. The greatest, or excuse me, the least common multiple here is y to the fourth, because we can make the other one become that. Okay? I mean, we technically can make this one become that by multiplying it, you know, cutting it in half. Okay, multiplying it by half. Okay, but if we if we go through that process, it makes it much more complex. So what we want to do is say y squared times y squared is y to the fourth. The least common multiple is y to the fourth. Okay, z cubed and z squared. Can I make this one become that one? No. No. Not easily. You could. But not easily. Could you make this one become that one? Yes. How do we make this one become that one? <laughs> Multiply it by z. z, right? Z squared is z times z. Z cubed is z times z times z. Right? Think expanded form. This means z times z. This means z times z times z. So we need just one more z. All right, so we're putting this as z to the third power. All right. Now, if these were actually fractions, they're not in this problem. This is, for those of you who just need the answer, you get annoyed if we extend it. That is the answer. That is the least common multiple. With the extension I'm doing, I'm actually going to show you why we find that. Okay, before I do that, though, are there any questions on how we got this out of these two things? I have well, a go ahead. Correct. Yep. For this is your answer. It's the least common multiple. It's finding the common denominator. Okay. So if I actually had this fraction, which I made up, and I was adding it to this fraction, I think they're looking for Tyler. Um, Yes, it is z squared. Thank you. That could have been just a major catastrophe. Thank you. All right. We need to multiply that by something to get. You guys, make sure you let me know if I go off the screen. Otherwise, I'll just keep writing forever and I'll have no idea. All right. Which, for some people, that's just funny. For me, it's not so funny. All right. All right. So this is 6x, y to the 4th, z cubed. 6x, y to the 4th, z cubed. That was the common denominator we just found, right? OK. So from here to here, here to here, I want you to fill in these boxes with your neighbors, OK? What? Hey, for those of you struggling, you're trying to figure out what you're multiplying this by to get that, right? So 6 times what is 6? 1. one. x times what is x? 1. y to the 4th times what is y to the 4th? 1. How boring. Yeah. All right, how about z squared times what is z to the 3rd? Z. Yes, all right, finally. OK, z, what does this have to be? 1. Not 1. Z. Z, right? We need to make the fraction equal 1, right? So we're multiplying the fraction by 1. Now, like if you're... Oh, it's just a special. Yeah, special number 1. So if you're struggling with that, remember it's just the same thing we did right here. We go back to this problem. Figure out what we multiplied this by to get that special number 1. Okay? And so now if we're, if we're going back here, z times z or z over z, this numerator becomes z. Here, 3 times what's 6? 
2. 2. X times what's X? Y squared times what's Y to the 4? Squared. And Z cubed times? 1. So this on top is? 2Y squared. 1 times 2Y squared is? 2Y squared. Nope. So when we're adding fractions, we keep the denominator. 6x, y to the 4th, z cubed. And we put the numerator. 2y squared plus, yeah, don't forget the plus. It's plus z. You're right? Okay. That is our solution. We try to factor the top. There's nothing to oh, factor. Because that's the common mistake. Never mind. Hey, like, they're not the the same. What other thing? It's, the, it's, it's what you're most. It's, it's um, that's that's just the common. Remember this pro this piece over here. This was our this was the answer to what they're asking. Remember, I extended the problem. Oh, yeah. Is the actual answer of the two things? Like if we were if these were fractions, which I made up. Right, I just put the one over them. The whole point of finding this is so we can do this process. It's just that's what we're practicing in this example. So for this example, all you really had to do was find the common denominator. You didn't have to do all this jump. And on the rest of these, we won't do any of that. I was just showing you the purpose of what we're doing. I don't want you to think I'm wasting your time. You know? Any questions there? Okay. Hey, let's look at number three. Okay, copy down in your notes. Talk to your neighbor about what you're going to do first. All right, so what are you going to do first? Distribute. Distribute? How many say distribute? Yeah, that's what my first class said, too. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, hey, hey, if we distribute, that's going to give us the product of this. We don't really want that. Oh, you no. can cross out the 3x plus 1 on both sides. And we're not canceling either. They're not fractions. We're trying to find a common denominator. Yeah? Okay. So 4 and 3, what's common between them? 12. 12. All right. Hey, so we're done with this. We can, get, we can ignore those now. Oh, okay. All right? Now, if you think of this, this is 3x plus 1 to what power? The first power. And this is 3x plus 1 to the okay. second. Now, if you go back over here, remember when we had y squared and y to the fourth? Uh, what was it? <laughs> y to the fourth. It was y to the fourth. This is a bigger power, right? And z cubed and z squared, we took the, the bigger power. Let's come back over here, tell your neighbor what we're going to put down here. Okay, for 3x plus 1 to the first and 3x plus 1 to the second, we are keeping 3x plus 1 to the second. second power. Okay, this over here says you have 3 times 3x plus 1 times 3x plus 1. That's, that's this part expanded. We have two of them here. We have one of them there. We need to bring down two of them so that we can make this become the common denominator. Right? x minus 2 and 0. Yeah, we, we have x minus 2 to the 0 power, right? Which is 1. It's nothing. So we need x minus 2 down here. She knew it. Okay? That is the common denominator. It's actually pretty simple. It's really simple. You know, how many got that? How many got part of it? Okay. What kind of questions do we have going? What are you going to have to multiply this by to get this? Four times what's twelve? Three. Three, three x plus one time to the first times what is three x plus one to the second? And x minus 2 times what's x minus 2? 1. 
So that would be the piece you would multiply by. It. Like if we were doing this, that would be this over this. Okay? And to get from here to here, 3 times what's 12? 4. 3x plus 1 times what? Or 3x plus 1 squared times what is 3x plus 1 squared? 1. 1. So we don't need anything there. Nothing. And x minus 2 we'd need? x minus 2. Okay? So we'd have to multiply by 4 times x minus 2 this thing by that to get that. Okay? How many are staying with it? Any questions there? So why yeah? is this going to get it? Uh, I'm confused as to why. Never mind. Okay? Yeah? So this seems. A little it, easy. Well, it'll get it'll get tougher. Sorry, I don't want to give you guys the impression that this is easy math. We don't we don't want easy math. Okay, here you go, number four. Give that a go. Hey guys, some of you get this really well, and some of you struggle with a, a bit with it. Have patience with the people in your group if you're really getting it. Help them out. Hey, the numbers numerically we have one and we have two. What is it? Two. Two. Okay. So we're done with the number part. And then you have a y and a y squared on the outside. A y and a y squared. Y you take the higher power, y squared. Okay, so these are just like little puzzle pieces once they're factored. That's the benefit of it being factored. Y minus 3 and y minus 3? It, yeah, it's y minus 3. It's not 1. We need that piece. Okay? So we have that. They're the same thing. So and then 2y plus 5 and? 1, so 2y plus 5. That is our common denominator. Nicole? Because the common, the least common multiple of y minus 3 isn't 1. Yeah. Okay, so if, it, if they each, each of them have it, you need to bring it down. Right? You can't just get rid of it. He said so. All right. Hey, try number five. I think what are you going to have to do first? Factor. Yeah, factor. Woohoo. Uh, hey, we factor number five. We get x, what? Minus two. x minus one. x minus two, x minus one. And here we get? x plus two, x plus one. X plus two, X minus two. Hey, difference of two perfect squares, right? C. C. No X. Okay. Parentheses kind of look like a C. Okay. Hey, what do they have in common? X minus two, right? So we need the X minus two. Okay. That gets rid of that piece and that piece. This one has an X minus one. This one doesn't. We do need that x minus 1. What other piece do we need? We need the x plus 2. It came up last period. Do we have to have them in a specific order? It doesn't matter which order. Right? Multiply. It's like I read your mind. Yes? <coughs> oh, at the end? It... It's not wrong if you multiply it out, but it's it's much more difficult when remember the whole point of doing this is to go to that. And so it makes it more difficult to get get the top number or numerators. So keep it in factory form with them. Other questions? Okay, everyone rate themselves one to five. All right. All right. Looks like we're doing well. Number six. Give number six a go. Okay, two th what do we have here? An x plus two, x minus three. Now I'm just going with what you're saying. I'm hoping that's right. Is that right? Yeah, of course. Okay, we've got a bunch of us second here. Okay, what's this one? X plus two, x plus two. Dude, x plus two or x plus two. Yeah. We're in sync. X plus two squared. Okay? So looking at that, if we think back to that very first one we did, 
This is to the first power. This is to the second. What do we need? X plus 2 squared. X plus 2 squared. If you were to write out x plus 2, yeah. x plus 2, quantity of x plus 2, quantity of x plus 2, you would end up with like x plus 2, x plus 3, and x plus 2, and you just like put those together, x plus 2 squared. Oh, very true. Yeah, it's okay if you wrote that out as x plus 2 times x plus 2. Okay? Doesn't matter. I, I prefer like this because I'm lazier. Like that. More laziest. Okay. All right. No, we're not. All right, hey, we good? Most laziest. Any questions? You added unnecessary prefix. Last one in example one, number seven. There you go. Give it a go. In terms of a word that has an right here, in terms of factoring two by negative three, that gives us negative six. Two things that multiply to make negative six and add to five. Six and negative one. Good. So x plus six, x minus one. All right. We've got to then divide by. Stick the two in front of Make sure we divide by a and reduce. Oh, it's going to sound like that's not right. Okay. So we divide by that 2. Divide by 2. This becomes x plus 3. And this is? 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1. All right. Here we get 4 times negative 3, or negative 12. Two things to multiply to make negative 12 and add to 4. Uh, 6 and negative 2. Good. x plus 6 and x minus 2. two. I'm out of it. And you got to divide by a and reduce. Divide by four and four. In this case, when we reduce, this becomes one half, and this becomes three three twos. So we call that two x plus three and x no two x minus one. Okay, in terms of common denominator, this has an x plus 3, this one doesn't, so we need that x plus 3. This has a 2x minus 1, this one does as well, so we're going to take that. And this has a 2x plus 3, we need that. Common denominator, there it is. Plus Jones. All right, moving on. Next problem. Are we gonna have to get another note? I don't know. We're gonna put this one in our notes now. Example three, number eight. Here we Wait. go. Well, we've been all we've, of yeah, we put them. All I'll in. tell you what the homework is here in a while. Sorry, guys. We have twenty-three oh. minutes. You guys want more note sheets? Yes, please. Oh, except for you guys can like yes, do it on your own paper, you know. Yes. I'm gonna stack them like that. And then we're multiplying by something. 